So, hey, we at the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, as, as, as uh, Mark said, we're right here around the corner. I live here in Kansas City. We work in 116 countries around the world. I travel 50% of my time, been to over 60 countries, getting read, ready to head to Nigeria and Poland uh, in two weeks, then come back, and then a couple weeks later after that, go, go to Hong Kong and Seoul, come back, and then go to Malaysia and Philippines, come back, and then go to New Zealand, Australia, all countries where we have FCA, people like you that are gathering together, wanting to grow in their faith and grow in their sport. And so what brings us together is our passion and love for this sport. And you might have been drugged to this uh, uh, breakfast. I know my parents drugged me to church. I was drugged all the time. Wednesday night, Sunday night, Sunday morning. And I don't know if you're drugged here or if you decided to be here. But my prayer is that maybe God has something for you. Maybe God has something in store for you from a crazy lacrosse player that just wants to share three truths that I believe 10 years from now, if I come up to you and say, hey, Chase, tell me the three truths, you'll be able to go one, two, three, guaranteed, money back guarantee. Because I believe these three truths are applicable for every single person in this room. 450 strong. And I know God's called leaders together. Wrestlers are leaders. And you go, well, I'm not, I don't feel like a, a, a leader. Sociologists have said even the most shyest and introverted people influence and impact 10,000 people in their lifetime. And I don't think we have a room full of shy, introverted wrestlers. Think of the millions of lives that are at stake that hang in the balance based off of how we leverage, how we use this God-given gift that it is a gift. Leadership is a gift that we have to steward it and utilize it every step of the way. And so when I think about the Fellowship of Christian Athletes working around the world, and we have 400 strong here this morning, I think about how we are always investing, always making a difference, providing a resource, a version reading plan, placing a Bible in hand. We distributed over 2 million Bibles last year alone around the world, putting God's word into coaches and athletes' hands. When I think about FCA, one of, one of the best examples I can think of is I read recently about, about the Panama Railroad. You go, Dan, don't you mean the Panama Canal? That came 14 years later. But in 1850, they built the Panama Railroad. And before they opened the canal that connected the Atlantic and the Pacific, which changed trade, there was simply the railroad. Mark, you probably know about that. He's in the railroad business. And guess what? 1850, $8 million. Today, that's $380 million. They laid 47 and a half miles of railroad track. And the unique thing, besides taking five years, they laid 170 bridges. Bridge, okay, bridge, go bridge. Constantly, 170 bridges. I thought, man, that's, that's FCA. We're about laying bridges. The next step, getting people over the, the crisis, getting people over the water. Let's build a bridge. Let's make an investment. It takes time. It takes money. Let's make an investment. Man, you had a chance, Carl, $50,000 out there? Sign me up. Let's match that money. Let's reach more wrestlers around the world. Another bridge, another bridge, another bridge. So I, I just pray maybe tonight, today, this morning, there's some bridge layers in here. The, the, the God's calling you to put another bridge down. And maybe you're here and you're going, I need a bridge. Maybe you're a bridge builder, or maybe you're just simply a bridge crosser. But I believe God's called us each year to be a part of this thing called the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. I love what Zane's story was about. Man, a staff person reaching out, he, he makes a profession of faith, and then, and then he studies God's word, gets baptized. We got, we got some of those things out there to baptize people, right, Mark? We ready? That'd be a little fun. But I tell you, I believe as leaders, I think about 1 Chronicles 12, when David was gathering his troops to fight Saul and is in Hebron, and he was gathering them, and man, he got 380,000 troops together 
to go against battle against Saul. He, he, ended, he ended up getting different tri troops. He got 40,000 from, from the tribe of Asher, 28,600 from, from uh, the Danites. I like that. My name's Dan. And then in, in verse 32, it says this. Then he gathered the men of Issachar who understood the times and knew what Israel should do. And there's 200 of them. That's 0.0006% of the 380,000. The remnant, the small remnant that God was calling and saying, the men of Issachar who knew the times, had awareness, not only had awareness, but what? They understood what to do. My question is, are we here in this room that we can know and understand the times and know what to do? And I believe God's filled a room of 400 people that has those two things. I believe God's called each of us. There's no one exempted that can make an impact. And there's a reason why you're here today. In FCA, we, we, we have themes for the year. Our, our theme this year is 24-7. I love it. It's like nonstop, giving God glory all the time. And we kind of wrap our theme and our camps, our programs around it. But I tell you, one, one of the verses that I love in challenging coaches and athletes is out of 1 Timothy 4-7. It's, it's one of my favorite verses. It says, train yourselves to be godly. For physical value has some value. Yes, it has value. When I went on my five-mile run this morning at 4.30, oh, dark 30, that has some value. But God's word says, but godliness has value for this life and what? The life to come. And man, this this morning isn't about the physical training. Train yourselves. Spiritual sweat. That word train is geminos in the Greek. It literally means to work out. And man, wrestlers, out of anyone knows what it means to work out. You know what it means to sweat. The question is, when's the last time you had some spiritual sweat? That you're working out and there's spiritual sweat before God. Because other people are depending on you doing what God's called you to do. Man, that, that gets me up early, keeps me up late at night. Man, people are, 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 are counting on me getting my face in the book, spending time in God's word. My kids, my grandkids, the people I work with are depending and counting. Will Dan have spiritual sweat today to live out 1 Timothy 4-7? And then I love in Psalm 78, 72, where David says, what did he do? He shepherded them. He shepherded them with integrity of heart and with skillful hands he led them. The question is, do we have men and women in the room that have a, 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 a integrity of heart and willing to use the skillful hands that God's given you? All of us in this room, no one's exempt, 400 strong, can make a difference. And so I want to share with you these three principles. I'll pray for you, and I'm off the stage. Because in FCA, we love the 5B principle. You've heard of the 5B principle? Come on. Be brief, brother. Be brief. Amen. That's what a good speaker is. We live by the 5B principle. I know you're going to use that by the end of the day. I know it. So number one, number one, three points. And you'll remember these. Trust me. Chase, I said in 10 years, you remember, didn't I? You're in Kansas City. We'll come in, I'll come and see you. So number one is run. Say it with me. One. Okay, that was like a zero. Okay, here we go. Come on, ready? One. Okay, let's do like a real wrestling room. Ready? One. Okay. One run. Run the right race, not the rat race. Amen? I grew up in Emmanuel Bible Church in Springfield, Virginia. Pastor Andy, you know what he would always say to me? And say to the congregation? Pastor Andy would say, even if you win the rat race, you're still a rat. As a high school kid, I'm like, what? Now it makes sense. Now it makes sense. Man, we, in today's world, we go, 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 do, 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 and it's all do, do. It is. 
Man, busyness is consuming us and distractions. I love Mark Buchanan, a pastor from Canada, says busyness is simply when we stop caring about the things we care about. Man, that strikes home. I like to add to that not only the things you stop caring about, but what? The people you care about the most. Who, who suffers the most when you get busy? People you don't know? No, it's the people the closest to you. They'll understand. My kids will understand. They'll always be there until they're not there. My wife will understand. My husband will be there until they're not there anymore. And the question is, are we running the rat race, not the right race that God has marked out before us? Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. Let us run with endurance the race that is marked out before us, setting our eyes on the author and perfecter of our faith. Man, that, 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 that's good for me each day to get a glimpse of that. Are we willing to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus? Because, man, the busyness will take us away. I don't know about you, but, but I have to develop phrase strikes in, in my life. Phrase strikes, have you ever heard of that? Like we go, oh, we don't want to curse, we don't want to have curse in our life. I have phrase strikes, things I will not say. You know what you'll never hear me say? I'm busy. It's the epidemic of today. We love to say it. Mark, it's the new hello. Hey, how you doing? I'm busy. I didn't ask if you're busy. I asked, hello. It's literally the new hello. Wow, you're, like, that's, your hello is I'm busy? I don't know about you, but, but I've picked up on a few things. And now, now you're, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. I'm talking to someone. Happens every single day on the phone. Talking to someone. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? And guess what they say? LB, they say, hey, I'll let you go. I go, let me go. I don't need to go. Are you busy? Because I'm not busy. I got time. And they go, ah, uh, okay, I'll go. Okay, good. <laughs> now we can get it right. I'll let you go. Because you wanted to go, but you're pinning it on me. It's going to happen today. Hey, okay, I'll let you go. Just, just say, I don't need to go. And they're like, shut down. Absolute shutdown every time. Let us run the race that is marked out before us. God's race, 1924. I love the old school movie, Chariots of Fire. We didn't get any amens on that. Come on. Okay, got a couple there. Jeez, fire the team up. Got to get you ready for the championships today. 1924, Eric Little. Man, I love that movie. And on top of the mountain, he's with his sister talking about how God has gifted him. And he literally says this line. He says, God made me fast. When I run, I sense and feel God's pleasure. You want to talk about the right race? That's the right race. That's not the rat race. The rat race is Harold Abrams who ran with him during those Olympics at the exact same time. And you know what his philosophy was? If I don't win, I don't want to run. He was caught up in the scoreboard and the accolades. Harold Abrams was running the rat race. And man, Eric Little, a cut above, he was running the right race. Run the right race that Jesus has set out before you, not the rat race. Number one, run. Run with endurance. Number two is shoe. Say it with me. Ready? Two. You don't have to say two. Just say shoe. Ready? Two. Okay, one. one. Two. Two. See, I caught you. I want to make sure you knew one. Some of you guys got stumped up. Two shoe. Man, John 13. When Jesus washed the disciples' feet. One of the most powerful passages right before he left earth. He's with the disciples. His followers who'd been with him for three years. Nobody was at the table. At the, the door, it busted play. No one washed their feet coming into the room. But Jesus asked for the bay base and a bowl. And one of the disciples could have done that instead of Jesus. And he taught them an example. Got down on his hands and knees and washed their feet and said, Now I've given you an example. Now go and do likewise. Go and do likewise. Man, one of the greatest ways to lead is to serve. But man, we've gotten it all jacked up. We've created this man-made term called servant leadership. It's nowhere in the Bible. It's just serve. That's all it says is serve. 
I'm so insecure that I just can't say serve, period. I'm a servant leader. Oh, you really want to be a leader. You're just serving to become a leader. How about just a plain servant? How about a servant of servants? God's looking for a few men and women to be servant of servants. I remember I was at a camp here in Kansas City, right around the corner. And at this leadership camp, I got a picture I want to actually show you, and they're going to pop it up on the screen, hopefully. But at this camp, we were doing a leadership camp. And we had some inner city kids from downtown Kansas City, and we're up at William Jewell College, just really close from here, probably about 15 minutes. I had about 150 kids, junior high, high school kids, teaching them how to lead. And one of the things we do is we do an off-site service project. Like, hey, if you want to be servants, you got to know how to serve. So they got to go to Habitat for Humanity. They go to the book bank, food bank. Some of them have to go on the side of the road and clean up on the side of the road. Well, this crew had the road duty. It was a tough one. Some of these kids have never served ever in their lifetime. It's like, hey, if you want to be a leader at your school, you got to learn how to serve. So when they come back, we have an open mic. We, open mic and FCA are famous, and kids come up and share about how camp has impacted their life, and they testify, and it's just awesome. And I'll never forget, I was directing this camp, and man, we're getting to the end, and Larry there in the green, he, he, think about it, he's looking even the opposite direction. That's Larry. Everyone else has got their eyes on something. Larry's looking in the opposite direction. And Larry was the head of the camp. You know, he was like five foot by five foot. And everybody loved Larry. And he had a voice like this. He talked like this. His raspy voice. And he'd go around. And he was, everybody loved Larry. Larry, Larry, Larry. And, and man, he would talk, 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 talk your ear off. Like, oh, please, someone come help me. Open mic. And I'm watching. We're getting to the end of it. And guess who gets up to go speak is Larry. It's going to be 30 more minutes. <laughs> Tell him the bus is to come later. Larry's in line. I almost went up to him and said, Larry, hey, next year. You're in seventh grade, you come back as eighth grade, next year. So anyways, I, I walked up on the stage with him, and Larry's standing there, and he's the closing person talking about the impact of the camp. Kids were talking about how they got, came to Christ, how they grew in Christ, how they met friends and fellowship, some loved the food, whatever. Never forget, Larry gets up. Holds his mic like this. I'm like, here it goes. And he looks. If you ain't serving, you ain't leading. And walked off the stage. <laughs> the great theologian, Larry. changed the way I see leadership. That's the way I lead. If you ain't serving, you ain't leading. You might think you're leading. Serve as Jesus did. Yeah, we're not going to go around taking people's shoes off and wash their feet in public, but can imagine if you had the mindset as if, that's what Jesus was saying, as you go, as if, getting down on your hands and knees and, and humbling yourself before someone and, and washing their feet. Imagine what that would mean to someone. God's calling us and as leaders, as leaders to run the right race, not the rat race. One run, two shoe, serve others as Christ would. And the last one is three, tree. Say it with me. Three, tree. One more time. Three. Okay, last time from the top. Let's have it. Ready? One, One. Two. two, three. three. You guys all pass. Great job. See, I knew you had it in you. I knew it tree, we have to have a strong foundation. We have to have a faith foundation. Something that we can stand on. I love in Matthew 7, the parable when Jesus talks about, about hey, if you take the words that I've said to you and apply them. You're like the man who, who builds his house on the rock when the rains come and the floods go and the winds come. It will stand. But pity the man that, that builds his house on Sand that hears the words and does nothing with it. The rains come, the floods come, the winds come, and the house tumbles down. And my prayer is that all of us will walk out of this room, out of this breakfast, 
And further, one, reaffirm your faith that you already know Christ. And you're going, i got to go deeper. My roots have got to go deeper. Invest in the root if you want more fruit. Amen? Invest in the root if you want more fruit. Many of us just want the fruit. But we don't want to invest in the root. That gets back to 1 Timothy 4, 7. Train yourselves to be godly. Man, I want to produce baskets of fruit. I don't want to just prove fruit. I want to produce more trees. That's the true fruit of an apple tree. It's not more apples, but actually true fruit of an apple tree is another tree. God's calling us to be tree planters. That's the opportunity that we have. I don't care about your age. I don't care about your gender. I don't care who you are. If you love wrestling and hate lacrosse, I'm okay with that. But are we going to be tree planters? To have a strong foundation. Remember one of the first times I went to Florida with my wife? I took her away right after we got married. I, I kidnapped her. Back in the day, you could do this. When you didn't have uh, stuff, I kidnapped her at work. Had her stuff packed, which is dangerous for overnight. And a guy packing for his wife. We had to go to the store and buy the right stuff after I packed. Picked her up at the government. She's working. I was in D.C. at the time. Picked her up. And we went down to see our friend Teddy at his place. And he gave us a little room. And we were seeing Teddy Ferguson. It was awesome. And I remember the next day, like, big storm came, like, shh, Florida had those storms. Rain came through, winds blew. And we drove down to the beach, and sure enough, this, this massive palm tree, like 30 feet high, shh, came over. And I looked down, I go, Teddy, the root system's like that. He goes, yeah, all the roots are like that. It's like, no wonder why it fell over. It's like, dude, up in Virginia, where I'm from, Whatever the height of the tree is, they say the roots are three times deeper. Three times deeper. My question is, are you, are you like this as roots? Or do you have a roots of a maple tree or an oak tree? It's not a question of if, it's a question of when. And my prayer is that you run the right race, not the rat race. My prayer is that, that, that you serve others as Christ would. And my prayer is that you in this room would have a strong foundation and that you would put your trust in Christ. And the opportunity is now. The opportunity is right now. You know, one of my dad was an All-American lacrosse player at the Naval Academy, played against Jim Brown, the famous Jim Brown, when he was at Syracuse. My dad actually had a hit on Jim Brown that was so good that, that the team came back and won the game against Syracuse. And my dad played every game in his career at Navy after that, all because of his hit against Jim Brown. You can read about it in the Wisdom Walks, by the way. Little promo, thanks, Mark. But guess what? My dad always had a saying Danny, if you do it now, spell it backwards. What does it spell? Wow, Dad? No, it's not wow. Spell now backwards W O N. One of the things he ingrained in me do it now, you've won. Do it now, you've won. My question is what are you waiting for? God's called us to respond, to have a strong foundation. Maybe there's a man, a woman, a child in here, high school student, came with the parents. You're like, man, I've never quite heard the gospel like this. I'm telling you, it can change your life. I still have in my Bible, <laughs> little card, 1982, July, where I gave my life at a camp. All I am, all I have, all I ever hope to. I now and forever dedicate my Lord to the Lord Jesus Christ. His use and glory absolutely, unconditionally, and forever. I signed it. I still have it in front of my Bible. Game changer. Just imagine, this could be your game changer moment. All this investment, all this energy FCA Wrestling did, just simply have one person said, hey, I want to do it now. I want to respond to the gospel. In FCA, we have something called the four. I'm going to put it up there. Is, is we have these four symbols, and I actually have a four bracelet. We have different colors, and we have ones from Ukraine. We have some of our team from Ukraine and from Europe over here. And, man, it's just incredible that we have the, these four. Is that first, God loves you is the heart. He loves you. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He loves you. He wants to have a relationship with you. The divide is simply that, that we're separated from sin. All of us are. Romans 3, 23, for all of sin and fallen short of the glory of God. 
then the good thing is we got a cross that God, Jesus rescues you. Jesus rescues you. God has an opportunity. Romans 5, 8, God showed his great love for us by sending his Christ to die for us. Why we were yet sinners. That in our sin, he sent his son to die for us. And the last one's the question. 1 John 5, 12 says, he who has a son has life. Who does not have the son does not have life. Sign me up. I want to have life. John 10.10 10 talks about the abundant life. The thief comes kill and destroy. But I've come to give you life more abundantly, extra large. 1982. At that camp, I, I, I went forward. I went forward in a little bonfire and Pastor Blue. His name was Pastor Blue. That's a crazy pastor's name. But I remember he gave a sermon. I feel like there's a fire underneath my butt. As a little middle school kid, eighth grader, I got up and, man, I was the first kid at the fire crying my eyes out. Didn't know anyone else was there. I looked up and then other kids were there. But I was the first one. That's what lacrosse and wrestlers do. They're the first. Threw a little wood chip into the fire. No longer I who live, but it's Christ within in me. I've been crucified with Christ. Changed my entire life. Why we do fellowship Christian athletes? Because we say, as our old president, Dal Sheely, football coach said, fellowship of Christian athletes. Take Christ out of Christian, you have the fellowship of IAN athletes. Who wants to be a part of the fellowship of IAN athletes? I am nothing. Because without Christ, I am nothing. We are not the fellowship of IAN athletes. We're the fellowship of Christian athletes. And today, with a simple prayer of expressing the desire of your heart, say, Lord, I'm yours. I'm in. I'm in. I want your son. It's not all you need to know, but it's a start. It's a start. I just wonder if someone here wants to pray this prayer with me. I just wonder if God is is just in the same way that there's a fire underneath my butt at Pastor Blue in that camp in New York that I could not sit down. I had to come forward. I'm not asking you to come forward. Oh, I'm simply just say this prayer with me. Prayer's never saved anyone, but a desire of the heart has saved someone. A prayer is a way to express it. So let's close our eyes, bow our heads. As you think about running the right race, not the rat race, as you think about God's calling you to serve, not a servant leader, just plain old servant. The Larry principle. <laughs> If you ain't serving, you ain't leading. For three tree, have a strong foundation. Some of us today have a foundation. And maybe your prayer this morning is simply, Lord, strengthen my foundation. I want the roots of an oak tree, and a maple, not of a palm tree. God, I want to go deep with you. Maybe you're already a believer, but you just simply want to say that prayer. Lord, I want to have a strong foundation. May my roots go deep. Just pray that prayer. You don't need me to pray it. Just pray it. Father, we thank you for the Christians in the room that that have responded just to say today was a, 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 a game changer. It was a stake in the ground. To simply say, God, I'm all in. Just like my little, my little card, I am all in. I, all I have, all I ever hope to be. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for those commitments. I do believe people prayed that prayer. Maybe you're here in this room, you're like, man, this is all new to me. Man, the video of baptism, it's just overwhelming. It's more Jesus than I've ever gotten in my life. We're thankful that you're here. Actually, this is why the breakfast is here. This is why we raised thousands of dollars. That's why hundreds of hours are put into this. For you. It's for you. Maybe for you, it's an opportunity to finally take that step. You can do it now. You've won. So let's, let's, I always say, let's say the prayer together. No one prays alone. So we all can pray this prayer. For those that are new praying the prayer, you can pray it. Those that have already prayed it, you can just pray it with us because no one prays alone. Simply, that last is the question mark. Who has the Son has life. Who does not have the Son does not have life. We desire that no one leaves this room of not having the Son. Simply pray. Let's pray with me. Ready? Lord Jesus, 
Come into my life. I commit my life to you. I receive your forgiveness. I believe you sent your son, Jesus, to die on the cross so I can have eternal life. And three days later, he rose from the dead so I can have new life. Lord, I'm all in. Today is my now. I love you, and I commit my life to you. I surrender my life to you. In Jesus' name, all God's people said, 10 years from now, I'm going to come ask, one, run, two, shoe, three, tree, amen? God bless you.